What would you do if your evil doppelganger took over your life? Welcome to the Complete Story Series. We take trade paperbacks and single issues and we break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then we read it dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panels, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems and all art is owned by its respective companies. Don't forget to support this great industry by buying your comics online or going to your local comic book store. This story contains issues 36 to 40 and is the follow-up to the Blue Flash arc that we started last time. We'll try to catch you up, but I do recommend watching that other episode. When we last left off, Barry Allen was lost in a crazy jungle where he's trying his best to outrun a dinosaur, just as a mysterious person saves him. But why is Barry Allen lost in the jungle? The future version of him is wearing a blue flash outfit, and he came back to the current day to prevent a series of bad events from happening by sacrificing his past self to seal a wound in the speed force. In the final battle against himself, the flash of the current day vanished in an explosion of speed force energy that would leave the blue flash alone in the current time period. And he doesn't know what to do now. He is from 20 years in the future, where Iris is in a wheelchair, Wally West is dead, and thousands of people died due to him being too slow. But he fixed it. It's over now. And as he removes his mask, he sees that somehow he is taking the place of his past self. He looks like he did in this time period, young again. He's been given a second chance to fix everything, and he's about to go home. He runs back to the house that he had back in this time period to find his then-girlfriend, Patty. He grabs her and he gives her a big kiss. He missed her so much. She finds the blue outfit odd, and she asks him why he sewed the watch that she gave him into the suit. But he explains that this is a new suit with lots of enhancements to protect him. She then pushes him along, telling him that he needs to get shaved and ready for work. And he does, and he begins to live the life that he had 20 years before everything ended so badly. He gets out to try again with Wally, and he sees old friends, and he makes new friendships earlier, the ones that he knows are going to pan out in the future. He also sets things into motion, things that need to be revealed earlier and prevented, like what the city did with all of the bodies from the events of Forever Evil. They were storing unnamed bodies in a storage container on the harbor. Unnamed bodies with families wanting to know where they were. Did they survive the attack? Knowing this information, he dropped off the location of the bodies of the Iris West, allowing her career to get jump-started. Everything is going perfectly since the Red Flash, the proper Day Flash, is still missing. And you know what? Since the blue flash is back here, he's changing things for the better. He's making people's lives better. The blue flash decides that he also needs to prevent some killers that got away with a lot before he was able to stop them. He runs to the home of a hacker, one that would have gotten away with murder due to a technicality in the justice system. The one that got away and made Barry start to distrust the justice system. Blue flash vibrates through the wall and he surprises this man. And then he vibrates his hand into the kid's chest, rupturing his heart. Everything has to be better this time. Heading back to the police office the next day, he agrees to take on the case of identifying all of the bodies that Iris was able to find, while Patty leads the investigation into this mysteriously murdered man that came in the night before. When they perform the autopsy, she discovers a ruptured heart, something that she's only seen ever done by the reverse flash. But Daniel West is locked up in Iron Heights, and she wonders what speedster could have done this. As Blue Flash continues filing out the bodies, another report comes in that Mirror Master is running around with another rogue. But this guy isn't a rogue. He's a guy trying out for the rogues, and he has no idea what he's doing as he's spraying flames all over, potentially harming innocents. Mirror Master tells him to stop. The rogues don't kill, but this guy's not listening. The Blue Flash runs over, and Mirror Master is already prepared for him as he prepares to fire on him. But this new guy doesn't know when to quit, and he begins to throw flames all over the place, potentially harming more innocents. Realizing that he brought an out-of-control kid to the fight with the Flash, Mirror Master calls the whole thing off, and he begins to pull the kid through his mirror so that they can escape. But as the kid's arm is going through the mirror, Blue Flash throws one of his nails at the mirror, shattering it, severing the guy's arm. But, but you're the Flash. You wouldn't kill him. You saw how careless he was. He could have easily harmed dozens of innocents. And then the Blue Flash raises a spike, ready to kill this kid. But if I end it here, he'll never have a chance to. But what stops him is Iris West watching nearby. Let him go, Flash! Blue Flash throws the kid to the police and he takes off. And Iris begins to think, I have a new headline. The Flash is a killer. So she meets with Patty to try and get more dirt on the Flash. And Patty reports the death of the man who had his heart ruptured. They both figure something needs to be done about this new Flash. They don't believe that it can be him. But there's really no other option. 
Meanwhile, the Red Flash is the one that's supposed to be in this time period, and he's stranded in the Speed Force, misplaced from time. There's other people here too, and they have an idea how to get everyone out of the Speed Force and back to their proper times. But it's gonna require them fighting off various dinosaurs and scaling a nearby mountain to the Speed Force Temple that's located nearby. But back with the Blue Flash, he realizes that he can stop all of the horrible events that he couldn't prevent. And there's one in particular that will claim hundreds of people real soon. Not only that, but the killer is going to go free. And knowing what's going to happen, the Blue Flash runs to the nearby ceremony, celebrating the new citywide Wi-Fi grid. He runs up to the ceremony and he picks out the killer right away, because he's kind of a man exploding with electrical powers. And he punches him straight to the ground, declaring, This time you die, Overload! Just in time for Patty and Iris to hear him say it. Meanwhile, in the Speed Force, Red Flash has managed to make it to the temple, where he reads the descriptions on the walls, asking why these people never came up here to get out of the Speed Force before. And that's when he reads the symbols and realizes, they needed a lightning rod, they needed the Flash, and they knock him unconscious. Back with the Blue Flash, he ignores the women, and he raises his hand to finish off Overload. But Patty runs over and she grabs his fist, just as he's coming down to hit Overload, and he throws her across the street. She gets up hurt and Iris runs over telling Blue Flash to stay away from them. Don't you dare touch her again. This was the exact moment Overload needed as the mayor in Central City turns on the citywide Wi-Fi, giving him all of his power. And he hits the Blue Flash with the full force of his abilities while the Red Flash gets strapped down to the altar of the Speed Force Temple. Blue Flash runs over and he uppercuts Overload. Confused, Overload has no idea why his charge didn't kill the Flash. Oh, you see Overload. I've had 20 years to get ready for this, and I prepared this suit just in case I ever found you. Overload then looks over the Flash. Oh, I see. Well, there's some electricity on you, isn't there? And he blows up the watch on the blue Flash's hand, blowing his hand up. Patty runs up. Oh my god, Barry, your hand! And blue Flash just spills the beans. Patty, I'm so sorry. You need to know that I'm not who you think I am. I'm not the Barry you know. I took his place, I stole his life. I'm from the future and I'm here to fix the past mistakes, but I've just made everything worse. Meanwhile, deep in the Speed Force, the real Flash, the Red Flash, is getting pumped full of Speed Force energy, reviving his powers. Blue Flash holds his hand out and the suit begins rebuilding his hand with a robotic hand. And that's when he figures it out. If he can't hit Overload due to the power he's absorbing, he'll stop the signal and stop the power absorption. He runs around the entire plaza, grabbing everyone's cell phones and shutting them all off. And then he runs up to the Wi-Fi tower, and he shuts that off too. With no signal pumping into the area, Overload's power shut down. Overload smiles. My power, it's gone. The noise has stopped. I can't hear the noise anymore. Thank you, Flash. You took my pain away. I thought you wanted to kill me. Blue Flash falls to his knees. I'm not that man anymore. And at that moment inside of the Speed Force, there's a massive feedback striking both the Red Flash and the man that turned him into a lightning rod with the power of speed. Realizing that he now has his powers back, Red Flash gets up and he runs out of there as fast as he can. He needs to return home. As he re-enters his own time stream and he lands back in the proper spot, he lands in front of the Blue Flash right after he stomped Overload. You! They both cry out. But Red Flash's adventures in the Speed Force aren't over yet as the man that was using him as a lightning rod runs out of the Speed Force and into the current time. Selkirk is here to play. I'm not done with you yet, Flash. You have the Speed Force energy that I crave. He begins throwing rocks at both of the Flashes and the Red Flash grabs the Blue Flash and they run off into the forest away from all of the innocent civilians. Selkirk can't go free, Red Flash tells the Blue Flash. He's a madman. I want to use a Speed Force explosion to remove him from this time period, just like you and I did earlier. Then give him to me. I'll do it, Blue tells Red. No, you're injured already, Red replies. Don't you get it? I don't deserve to be here. This is where I make good on what I've done. So Blue runs into Selkirk and he grabs hold, causing another massive Speed Force explosion, which leaves another crater on the ground. Red runs up to see Blue getting absorbed by the Speed Force. Barry, I'm so sorry. I was so arrogant. Please take a different path than me. Don't waste your years thinking of only vengeance. But there's one more thing that I need to let you know. I found a clue as to who killed our mother. You need to remember the name, Thawne. And with that, Blue fades away, leaving this time period forever. And Red stays there, feeling defeated. Meanwhile, somewhere else in time, Selkirk has been thrown into another time, another place, with his back broken. Someone picks him up and begins to carry him away, while someone else tells him, you'll begin to understand the power that you've claimed. 
I'm here to help you. Professor Zoom will teach you. And that is the ending of the Blue Flash story arc. Personally, I feel that it was ended a bit prematurely because of the whole DCU reboot, but I still really like what happened here, and I feel like the redemption that Blue Flash got was great. Once again, this is issue 36 to 40, and it will be volume 7, but that hasn't come out yet. I'm Benny for Comic Story, and if you enjoyed this video, check out the other ones on the screen right now. You just might like those, and I'll see you next time right here.